hello my dear students uh, let us discuss uh, some methods uh, which are used for controlling of uh, silting of uh, reservoirs uh, actually i have uh, mentioned in uh, last lecture uh, there are uh, six methods that is first one is proper selection of reservoir site second one is control of sediment uh, in flow and uh, third one is proper designing and uh, reservoir planning fourth one is control of sediment deposit in the reservoir and fifth one is removal of sediment deposit and sixth one is erosion control in the catchment area let us discuss one by one the first one is proper selection of reservoir site the silt transported in the system uh, depends upon the nature of the catchment area A stream collecting water from catchment area having soft or loose soil and having steep slopes may carry more sediment load hence the reservoir site should be such that it excludes runoff from easily erodible catchment area if a certain tributary of the main um, stream carries more silt the dam should be constructed to the upstream of that tributary okay so these points you should remember um, uh, okay uh, means these are the sum of the points for the proper selection of the reservoir site let us take uh, other point that is uh, control of uh, sediment inflow there are many methods for controlling sediment inflows and uh, they can be divided as under uh, the first First one is watershed management or soil conservation measures to check production and transport of sediment in the catchment area. Second method is preventive measures to check inflow of sediment into the reservoir. Now we will discuss in detail the soil conservation or the first method watershed management are further subdivided as engineering second one is agronomy and third one is forestry the engineering methods include use of check dams formed by building small barriers or dikes across the stream channels contour bounding and trenching gully plugging and uh, uh, bank protection this comes under engineering methods you understood no the watershed manage mainly it is uh, controlling uh, control of sediment inflows divided under two heads the first one is watershed management or soil conservation measures and second one is preventive measures to check inflow of sediment into the reservoir under watershed management or soil conservation again there are three types the first one is engineering second one is agronomy third one is forest under engineering there are different methods as I said uh, now and um, under agronomic uh, that uh, measures include establishment of vegetative screen contour forming strip cropping and crop rotation under forestry forestry measures include forest conservancy control on grazing uh, lumbering operations and forest fires along with management and protection of forest plantations and under second category that is preventive measures to check inflow of sediment into the reservoir here uh, preventive measures to check inflow of sediment into the reservoir include construction of bypass channels or conduits so these are the methods followed for controlling of sediment inflow. Third one is the proper designing and reservoir planning. From the point of view of sediment deposition, the following points may be given due consideration. The first one is the sediment yield which depends on the topographical, geological and geomorphological setup, meteorological factors, land use or land cover, intercepting tanks etc. Okay, so sediment yield which depends on all these factors, topographical, geological, geomorphological, meteorological, land use or land cover, intercepting tanks, etc. And second point is sediment delivery characteristics of the channel system, the efficiency of the reservoir as sediment trap, the ratio of capacity of reservoir to the inflow, configuration of reservoir, method of operation of reservoir, provisions for silt exclusion. So all these methods have to be considered. So this comes under proper designing and reservoir planning.
okay next method is control of sediment deposit in the reservoir here controlling of sediment deposit the deposition of the sediment in a reservoir may be controlled to a certain extent by designing and operating gates or other outlets in the dam in such a manner as to permit selective withdrawals of water having a higher than average sediment content okay the suspended sediment content of the water in the reservoir is higher during and just after flood flow thus more the water wasted at such times the smaller will be the percentage of the total sediment load to settle into permanent deposits there are generally two methods the first method is density currents already i explained what is density current and waste water release for controlling the deposition and both will necessarily result in loss of water this is control methods of sediment deposition next method is removal of deposited sediment the most practical means of maintaining the storage capacity are those designed to prevent accumulation of permanent deposits as the removal of, of as the removal operations are extremely expensive unless the material removed is usable okay therefore the redemption of uh, a lost storage by removal should be adopted as a last resort the removal of sediment deposit implies in general that the deposits are sufficiently compacted or consolidated to act as a solid and therefore are unable to flow along with the water the removal of sediment deposits may be accomplished by a variety of mechanical and hydraulic or methods uh, such as excavation dredging siphoning draining flushing flood sluicing and sluicing aided by such measures as hydraulic or mechanical agitation or blasting of the sediment the excavated sediments may be suitably deposited off so that these do not find the way uh, do not find the way again in the reservoir erosion control the last method in the catchment area under this category there are various methods of soil conservation such as provision of control bunds checking gully formation by providing small embankments afforestation regrassing and control of uh, grazing etc and also provision of vegetation screen uh, helps in reducing the sheet erosion so these are the methods of controlling the sedimentation you can see these figures the catchment vegetation can uh, uh, grow the vegetables uh, i mean uh, these are the catchment vegetation you can see uh, by this you can uh, avoid the sedimentation uh, okay and also wooden barriers if you uh, construct the wooden barriers that also eliminate the sedimentation can control the sedimentation can see here these are the wooden barriers here if you construct that this avoids the uh, uh, sediment deposition stepped watershed for sediment control this is also one of the method for uh, the sediment control stepped watershed you can see here these are the stepped watershed okay this also avoids sediments uh, deposition then flushing of sediments from reservoir so flushing of this also avoids the uh, sediment accumulation sediments losing here they provide this this avoids the silt uh, transformation and here also you can see this if you provide the sluice it avoids uh, the sedimentation next let us see that last uh, topic uh, in this reservoir that is losses in reservoir water losses mainly of evaporation and seepage occur under pre project conditions and are reflected in the stream flow records used for estimating water yield 
Estimation of these losses may be based on measurements at existing reservoirs and canals. The measured inflows and outflows and the rate of change of storage are balanced by computed total loss rate. The depth of water operated per year from the reservoir surface may vary from about 400 mm in cool and humid climate to more than 2500 mm in hot and arid regions. Therefore, operation is is an important consideration in many projects and deserves careful attention. Various methods like water budget method, energy budget method, etc. may be applied for estimating the operation from reservoir. However, to be more accurate, operation from reservoir is estimated by using data from pan meters or pans exposed to atmosphere with or without meshing in or near the reservoir site and suitably adjusted. Seepage losses. This is about operation losses. The next loss is seepage loss. Seepage losses from reservoirs and irrigation canals may be significant uh, if these uh, facilities are located in an area underlain by permeable strata. Uh, uh, avoidance in full or in part of seepage losses may be very expensive and technical difficulties involved may render the project unfeasible. As such, a percolation or seepage loss is small for most of the reservoirs and progressively gets lowered with the passage of time since the sediment getting deposited at the reservoir bottom helps to reduce percolation losses. But in some hills and valleys, of forming the reservoir, there may be continuous seams of porous rock strata or limestone uh, caverns, which cause huge amount of water to get drained out of the reservoir. A number of factors affect the operation from open water surface, of which the major factors are water spread area and frequent change of speed and direction of wind over the water body. Other meteorological factors like uh, vapor pressure difference between water surface and the layer of air above, temperature of water and air, atmospheric pressure, radiation, heat storage in water body and quality of water have direct influence on the rate of operation. Since the meteorological factors affecting operation cannot be controlled under normal conditions, efforts are made for inhabitation of operation by control of flow of wind over water surface or by protection of the water surface area by physical or chemical methods. The methods generally used are as follows. Wind break. Uh, covering the water surface, a reduction of exposed water surface, integrated operation of reservoirs and treatment with chemical water retardants V W E R S. So these are the uh, some of the methods used to avoid uh, the leakages in the reservoir. I hope all of you understood. Thank you.